this video we're looking at micrometers. We start the video by cutting the end of the drill off to use as a dowel in the micrometer lock. We also look at how to set and adjust the micrometer and some of the faults you'll get with a micrometer and how to overcome them. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. I've just set up my small rotary cutter in the vise and fitted a small cutting disc to the end. All I want to do is chop about 4mm off the end of the drill and that's because I need the same size as the drill for another project. So I'm just cutting a small piece off to use on a micrometer lock. Now you can see the small piece of drill that I cut off will just fit into this micrometer lock because the original one was crushed and distorted so I've replaced it with a new one. Now that fits okay. I'll take this apart and show you from the beginning. Those are the three parts to the spindle lock. This part fits inside. And then you have a little dowel. I should turn the outside diameter, this little roller rolls down, tightens up on there and closes the gap. So that's how the micrometer lock works. So the micrometer comes apart like that. That fits in there. And you have to get the locking ring. When you reassemble the lock system onto the micrometer, you can see on the top of the micrometer there's a slot there and there's a little peg on the ring that goes into that slot. Look at that peg goes down inside. When you reassemble it, this goes into there. And you have to get the, the anvil of the micrometer through the locking ring and then you can start to tighten it up. Now this is stiff because someone's tightened the thread up on the micrometer which it didn't need. You can see when it comes out that's locked, that's unlocked. So I'll tighten this back down to the, the zero position. You can tell the, how tight it is. If I hold the micrometer sideways like that it stays there. When on this one, I 
with this one you can't it's just too tight and I can't do anything about that I've tried slackening the screw off oil in it the thread has just been clamped too much so beans that that's tight the ratchet won't work it, it works as a ratchet but it's not turning the micrometer because it's too tight but um, if I wipe the surface let's put a piece of paper in there tighten that down you can see it's not far off zero now if you need to alter that to get that to zero you use your spanner and if you look at the back here you can see there's a it should be a hole but somebody's altered it that much they've made it a slot and you can hook the spanner onto there and then from this side needs to go the other way. On this side you can turn the barrel cards on that one, it's all locked up but you can turn the barrel round till the zero lines with the zero for a fine adjustment but as a micrometer it, you could use it but uh, you're not going to get the feel on it that you need to get for accurate readings so I'm keeping this just as spare parts really so on this one I'll show you as you bring it down the ratchet ratchets and you can see the zero is on zero if it wasn't by putting the spanner in the hole at the back by turning the body of the micrometer there round you can set it properly so that the line aligns with a zero. Now the other thing I need to tell you about which is useful to know when you're using the micrometer if you're using it on a lathe or you're grinding objects and you're always using it on a similar diameter you'll find that the anvil at the bottom will wear and what will happen is the bottom anvil instead of being flat will wear like that because you're constantly using it on a bar so this wears as a dish the other anvil on the top should remain fairly flat because you're in a different position every time you're using it but the way you get rid of this dish in this side is by lapping the face now I haven't got a lapping block the lapping block is a block of cast iron with grooves in it so it's about this size and it has lots of grooves going across the face on both sides and the top and bottom faces are ground and parallel and you put the micrometer on so that the anvils come down on each side and just rub it backwards and forwards until both faces are parallel and you can see there's no wear in it. So to adjust a more than right micrometer, I think it's the same with Starrett or any other make. First of all, the adjustment of the micrometer is made by tightening the friction sleeve which is fitted to the stem, which is on the nut under here. That tightens the sleeve to give you a nice feel on the thread so don't over tighten it otherwise you'll end up with these 
which you can't use a ratchet. So once you've set the the nut on here inside and you're happy with the movement you can clean the faces, bring the anvils together and the zero should line up with the datum line. Now if that lines out you can adjust it with the spanner so it gets a datum line exactly next to the zero. That's how you adjust the micrometer. That's a 0 to 1 inch. Now, I also have some other micrometers. I'll show you these. The heads are the same. This one is a 1 inch to 2 inch. And you can see no spanner, no setting piece. Now, as you go over an inch with a micrometer to set the micrometer you need either the setting piece which would have been here which is the ground um, piece of steel at a known size and you just use that to zero your micrometer to it would probably be an inch so without that you'd need to use gauge blocks or something that you know is the correct size so you can set the micrometer to zero to. It's exactly the same as well with Adjustments on these micrometers are the same on this end. They're all the same, it's just a different body on these. And then the last micrometer I have is not a more than right. This one's got somebody's name on and it's got Helios. So I don't know whether they were, because all these are virtually the same, I don't know whether they bought them off other people and swapped them round. You can see on here it's, it has all the different measurements 60, in 64ths all the way around. What the reading would be on the micrometer exactly the same as the other one, the lock on the top this one works okay and that's another one to two but made by Helios I haven't got a stat at one I'm afraid so that's a combination micrometer with Imperial and metric. Now I don't have a metric micrometer except that combination one which is different to the others but these are the two thimbles Imperial and metric and they show you the difference you both have a datum line and on the imperial you go from 0 to 25 thou on the thimble on the metric one it goes 0.5 per division so that you one turn is 0.5 two turns is a millimeter Oh well, that's it for today. Hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time on the Knots Engineering.